Hello, this is Mikey Game from Scratch, and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at creating isometric tiles using Blender. Uh, you see, just earlier this week, I finished publishing a tutorial on creating tiled maps in uh, the Tiled Map Editor. And a question I got over and over and over again is, where is a good source for tiles? And unfortunately, the answer for that, for isometric tiles anyways, isn't easy. There aren't a ton of them out there. So what I started doing is looking into uh, Blender a little bit more to see how much work was involved in creating uh, tiled-friendly 3D tiles. And I found um, it seemed a little complicated, but it's actually a very simple, very clean, very quick workflow. So that's what I'm here to share with you today. Today we are going to look at using Blender to create not only one tile, but multiple tiles very quickly all at once. And this is going to cover Quite a bit of things actually. We're gonna actually even get into a little bit of programming by the end of it. But don't worry, nothing daunting. So if you're an artist on this, don't let programming scare you off. And if you're a programmer, don't let the art side of this scare you off. This is something that both of you can do very comfortable comfortably. So let's jump right in. We first off we need fire up blender, like so. And nicely, they've started with our tile for us. Now the key thing with working with tiles is getting your camera and your angle set up right. And the critical thing is I'm going to be modeling about the origin. That means I want to keep every shape where it is now. But at the very start, we only care about the base tile. The base tile is the critical tile when it comes to a tiled map. It's the one that can't really move. It's the one that determines if a tile fits within a cell, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the default cube right here. We want it to be as it is. So it's going to be um, it's a 2x2x2 two by two by two orbited around 0, 0, 0, which is perfect. What we want to first do then, switch over here to face mode and grab all of these faces except for the bottom, and kill them. Now, you'll see we got a single face offset from the origin. Perfect. Now, I should point out, this is me using Blender. I'm going to assume you have some competency in Blender. If you don't, I've done a couple of tutorials already. You could probably run through any of them and get up to speed. But I'm going to assume you already know how to do everything I'm about to do in Blender. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining hotkeys or anything else. In fact, I'm only gonna tell you one hotkey during this entire process, and that's just because it's a very important one. So if you need to brush up on Blender, I've got a couple of links um, I'll put down below, so you can definitely use them and you'll easily be able to follow along with the rest of this. So now that we've got our tile set up, the next most important thing is our camera. Uh, here is, we're nicely at the camera settings by default already over here in the properties window. Uh, we just wanna come in here, turn that up to 100%, and I'm gonna start with 128 by 128 tile. But for calibration, we'll go with 128 by 64. So we just care about the base height. Now keep in mind, in a two to one ratio tile, a two to one ratio isometric tile, the base is half of the height of its total width. And that's why we've done height at 64 versus uh, 128 width. But we're gonna jack that back up to the full amount before we finish with our tile. We just wanna calibrate our camera first. So on that topic, select your camera, and what I'm gonna do is hit zero to switch myself into camera mode. And we just wanna gate it around this tile. First off, I'm gonna start with some quick settings here. Um, there's a text version of this tutorial with all of this stuff in it, all the code, everything else. So be sure to check with it. Um, if you get lost here, you need to look anything up, it'll be linked down below as well. But I'm just gonna start this guy off with 10 minus 10. So we just basically wanna be a little offset from the origin. And we'll tweak that Z value in a little bit. Um, and next up, we want to switch our rotation. We want to go with uh, 60 degrees, and we're going to look at it on a 45 degree angle. So Y is 0, and Z is 45. So now you can see there's the base of our isometric tile all set up and looking good. So now we just want to come in here to our camera tag. So your camera's got to be setting for this guy to exist. And just switch to orthographic. Orthographic means that as things go further off in the distance, it doesn't get any bigger. There's no illusion of depth here, which is key to making isometric look right. And now we just sort of want to set the orthographic scale until we're framed nicely within our camera rectangle. And here's where your z-axis of your camera is going to come in a bit. So just between these two, just scale it out. until it matches nicely. Now, you can hold down shift to, to move at a slower rate. But we're almost there now, let's just bring. All right, so we're touched on all tips. We now have our ability to create a tile. Very cool work. So now let's go back here and actually do it. Uh, before you render your tile out though, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's got transparency set. Now in Blender, that is set under shading, and alpha. 
So I'll change sky to transparent. So now when we render this guy, like so, you'll see we have our transparent tile. So we've just created a, a 128 by 64 tile. Now what we want to do is turn it back into a 128 by 128 tile, like so. Switch on back to our 3D view. Now we gotta set this again so that we're at our bottom edge, like so. So we just set up for creating a tile and we're done, actually. We could finish the tutorial right now and you've learned something. So I could sit here and go, all right, render, render that guy out, first successful tile. Let's file her up the tile map, and give her a test drive. So new map, uh, yeah, so let's render at full height. So when you're setting your tile size though, you're setting the size of the base when it comes to the map. If you want more details, watch the uh, tiled isometric tutorial. Uh, but all right, we're set up here. Now let's go ahead and import our tile. Since we only have one, I can't bring in a map. So we'll call it my lonely tile, like so. Uh, add a tile to it. Oh, I didn't save that anywhere. I should probably actually save that image somewhere. Save as image, uh, desktop. I already did this video once, so you'll notice there's a, a few remnants. I didn't like the results, so I'm recording it again. Uh, so back over here, we should now go to our desktop, and we have demo tile done. So we should be able to grab it and paint to our heart's content. Ta-da! So you have created nice, clean, isometric style tiles. Now the problem that you're going to see here is that um, that doesn't look so good, especially if I turn off the grid. Uh, so you'll notice it's very tiley. And the reason behind this is the texture on that tile. It's being lit and that is causing an inconsistency across. So basically this edge and this edge have different lighting. So when they butt up against each other, they give you this result. Now you can fix that quite easily in the material of the tile. So instead of using this bland gray, let's switch it to a different color. But let's, so grab your cube and go over to material. Now the color itself isn't important. It just shows up a little bit better than the gray. So we'll make this guy this mauveish color here. But the key guy here is shadeless. Turn shadeless on, and now it'll just be a flat color. So we'll go ahead and we'll render that again. Save it again. And delete and add. So, and now when we draw it, oh, all right, I was still active. Uh, let's undo that. So now when we select our new tile and draw it, much nicer. Now you are noticing still there's a very, 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 very thin edge between tiles. That is because your zoom level right here isn't 100%. So we basically probably want to grab the camera and move this to 2.832 or 2.831. Very, very precise on, but you want to make sure that this this edge right here is really butted up, and that one there, see, it's not. So two point eight three zero, uh, two point eight seven five. Ooh, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, two point eight three five. Two point eight three. Seven. All right. Well, you get the gist. You're going to want to find the magic number. Uh, it's kind of a monotony. Why does it always seem like we're going the wrong way? Um, there. We'll call that a day. But if you do get that edge, make sure that you're lined up perfectly and that's the key thing right there. But we did just successfully create our first major tile and now you just sort of work with the space you've got. Uh, so if you wanna make a full cubed out tile, we'll go into uh, edit mode here, uh, edit mode. And let's just extrude this guy up to the upper edges. Again, you probably wanna zoom in, make sure that you're perfectly precise. Otherwise you're gonna have some issues again. Uh, we'll render this guy out. And save it as demo tile two, like so. Now we can bring in another tile. And there. 
Now, you're not getting a whole lot of great detail out of here because there's no shading, there's no detail, there's no nothing. Um, so once you put your texture map on there, obviously your shape will look uh, a little bit less blah. Uh, but you'll notice with the increased precision between the lines of our newly drawn tile, there's no gaps. So that gap thing is kind of important. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're very accurate or you can get these little gaps in like this. But that was it. We just created an isometric tile in Blender in under 10 minutes with all that instruction. In reality, once you've done that once, you could probably do it all again in about 20 seconds. Um, so Blender can very easily create blended tiles. Now, obviously, this is pretty ugly, pretty crap. So we're not going to leave it there. We've definitely got a little bit more to go. But we certainly have the setup and rendering done. So let's jump on back to Blender. We're going to look at a couple more things. Now, first one's a bit of a tip. It's got nothing to do with anything for the most part. But let's say you want to create something that, well, isn't a cube. So you might want to work in the space that using isometric style, but you might be, say, modeling a flower pot or a sign or something that doesn't take up the full space or the full base. But you're still going to probably want a base as a reference um, to work with in a modeling reference. And the cool thing is we can create one very, very easy. So switch out of edit mode. So you can create a cube or create a duplicate of your cube. And that's what I'll do. I'll just create a duplicate. So here, I'm gonna move out of camera mode. So shift D, grab, and we'll move him over. So we're working with a copy now. And we'll just call this guy a reference cube. So if you want something that you can model your other guys within, we'll just grab this guy right here and go to modifiers, add modifier, wireframe. Create the th thickness, whatever you want for the amount of detail and done. So now we've got this other shape we could now bring back to the origin um, and then or wherever you want to put it and you know, let's do, actually you won't bother and now you can model your other shapes within it. Now what you might find is that it's getting in your way and that's where these guys are your friends. So if you want it there but you can't select it, click that guy. If you want it so you can't render it, Click that guy. But this gives you a, a handy uh, visual aid for creating other isometric shapes in. And obviously, if you want to start adding more size, or if you want to make your shapes, you know, uh, 2048 by 1022 or 1024. That I felt wrong. Anyways, if you want to make them double the size, you can literally do that. Just keep your units even. So we go back to this original shape. You'll see it's at the origin. And it's two by two by 1.617. No, the up, down, that's thanks to the isometric perspective. But the other two work out perfectly for you. Now, what you want to do with these guys is if you're going to make this guy twice the shape or whatever, you would just come in here and literally double it up. But always keep it powers of two, and all of your magic and the math continues to work perfectly. So we'll undo that, we'll stick with a single tile. But now the reality is, a lot of times you may want to work with a large map all at once. Creating tiles one at a time is gonna be a pain in the ass. Let's say we were making, say, a racetrack in isometric perspective or a full level, and we wanna now model all of that. Let's look at that process. And you're gonna find, this is where working in Blender as opposed to doing these things freehand becomes very, very, very powerful. So let me just get rid of him, come on. Go away. All right, you're gone. So now what we're gonna do is take this guy, but instead we're gonna deal with a lot of them. So first, let's go in and modify this guy. So we can do a little bit more with them. So edit mode, and let's just add a couple of loop cuts. Uh, first this way, like that, and then this way, like that, this way, like that, this way, like that. So this allows us to sink and raise the edge of the tile. Now remember when you're doing all of this, it's ultimately important that you keep your base stationary so that they all fit together nicely. So as long as your tile is supposed to take up all of the space, don't move or edit or otherwise touch the base ever. So now that we've got it modified, we've got a little bit more detail. Now let's look at creating a bunch of them. And here's where the magic of Blender comes in. We're going to use a modifier again. This time we're using an array modifier. We're actually going to use two of them because we're going to expand it in two directions. And don't bother setting anything because it's all going to be erased when we add the second one. So let's apply two of them back to back like so. So now we have a four by four array of tiles that are just unfortunately in the wrong direction. So we're going to switch this guy out. So instead of going in that direction, the second array goes and the order which array you use does not matter but you're just gonna to switch to the Y axis instead. So now if I go here, you'll see we've just created um, a two by two. So we've got four tiles now in a nice grid. Now what we're just gonna do is jack that up a bit. So now we have six by six. So we got the basis of a map going on. Keep this guy around the origin. That origin is a magic number. Let's not touch that. But otherwise we are set. We are ready to start working. Uh, we can do some really cool things. So all that we have to do now is say, all right, we're good. So now we just turn that into one large single mesh.
and we can edit it accordingly. So say we were making a racetrack, we want to have the center piece to say like a bowl. So the center up a little bit, a loop around the outside, and then the outside is solid. And we're not going to go into a lot of precision. I want to show you the technique, not actually how to do this. So this is one of those things you would spend a lot of time tweaking each particular tile. Um, obviously, you're going to want to texture them, add details, etc. So right now, we're just going to do rough shaping. And one thing that's key here is there's a lot of extra edges. There's a lot of internal edges, etc. in this mesh. And that means working in edges is a very bad idea. But those edges are going to come in very, very, very useful in a second. So don't mess with them. So we're going to only work in faces at this point in time. Just come back here and go to, um, let's see, where it, I want to be edit mode like so. Grab everything. Actually, let's grab nothing. Back, back to edit mode. Grab nothing. We'll switch over to face mode. Oh, I mean, extra. That's annoying. Okay, so now we want to do a quick track. So we're going to leave these center guys pretty much untouched. So, oh, everything's select. There's our rapid fire racetrack. And we're gonna to wanna to conceal our axis to stay about the Z axis. So just do a G and a Z, and we'll move the Z. Oh, commit. G, Z, move down a little bit. So, and boom, we just rapid fire created this uh, racetrack of sorts. It's not the greatest work you've ever seen, but you can add a little bit of detail as you go. So G, Z, drop that ledger down a little bit. So there, see your edge is coming into effect here. And there's going to be some artifacts like that. It's going to be annoying. Uh, here, we'll undo that for now. Uh, but don't worry, that will all go away in a second. So we can rapidly create our base shape that we want. Like so, we've just created a very interesting quick map and done. So now let's go back to dealing with tiles. You see right now we're dealing with one gigantic cube. And that's not ideal. So here is the one hot key I'm going to tell you about because you may not use this a whole lot is select everything. I'm not going to tell you that one. You should know it by now. But P. Hit P for separate and then choose by loose parts. And that's where all of those annoying edges come in very handy. So let's go click and boom. What just happened is it just sliced this all back into tiles. So that's a tile, that's a tile, that's a tile, etc. So if we look here in our outliner, we just very, very quickly created 36 tiles for our shape. Very cool. And so now we could essentially model each one. So we could go back to object mode. And if I wanted to now like tweak that edge there, um, I well, oops, don't want to actually move them completely. I can come in and you can edit it however you wish. So now you can go into edge mode if you wish. Just keep your bottom base intact. But now you can tweak things however you want. You can insert loop cuts, whatever you wish. And just be careful that uh, if you want to smoothly transition into the tile beside you, you guys are going to have to keep the same uh, basic shape and profile, which is why it's nice to edit it as an entire unit first. But if you do want to come in, for example, this guy here, if we want to add some detail on either of these two, we could do a loop cut across here, bring those down, add shape however you wish. But it's going beyond the details of what I want to do. So what we've now got is 36, on object mode, I have 36 separate tiles that we can play with. And we created those very, very quickly. And I'll switch back to our camera perspective for a second. And you can see we're now looking at one of those tiles. It's oddly enough, cube.001, not cube. Uh, but what we now want to do, and this is going to be a trick. All right, Game Dev Radio. Okay, just a sec. Hopefully that's almost done. Um, what we're going to want to do is turn off all the surrounding cubes. So the guy that we're looking at is cube001. You see right there. So the logic of what we want to do is turn off all of the other ones like so so we can render just it and then what we're going to do is move each other tile back to the origin render it and move it back to where it was now if that sounds like a monotonous amount of annoying work you are 100 percent right this would be a terrible 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 thing to deal with fortunately we're programmers or at least i'm a programmer and this is where blender is a programmer's best friend let's fire down and make a quick script to deal with this for us. That's what we're going to do next. First off, I'm going to do some house cleaning from the last time. Okay, good. So first we need to now make a script. And so you get this, the basis of what the script is going to do. It's going to grab each tile, hide all of the other ones, bring it to the origin, render it, move it back to where it was, and then complete that for all of the rest of these. And Blender has a nice um, Python 
based API built right in and it includes amazingly enough a text editor that we can work with. So bring up the text editor, text editor like so, create a new text file like so, turn it to code markup mode right here. And let me see if I can jack up the view a bit here so you can actually read what I'm doing. Uh, let's make this guy say 24, all right. Good, get rid of the properties window. Let's give it a little bit more room so you can see what I'm doing. And now some script. Now again, this script is available on the Game From Scratch website, uh, which will be linked below. So don't worry too, too much about what I'm doing. And another caveat, I am not a Python programmer. I haven't used it in years. And I am not really a Blender dev. This is the first time I have used their API ever. I learned it very fast. It's a very powerful thing. But what I mean there is I'm probably about to write some real crap Python code and I'm probably gonna use Blender very poorly. So I would not use me as a role model by any definition, but what I'm about to do works. And that is generally the most important thing. So first off, Create an array to hold our cubes, these guys. And first, let's loop through all of the objects in the scene, which would be your scene and your world and your lamps and your cameras, etc. And if obj.name.starts with so obviously if you rename your cube to something other than cube you're going to rename your code to whatever your starting name was and obj.append obj so all this code really basically did is list through all of the things in the scene if their name started with the word cube add them to our array now next up we want to do another loop. I do a lot of loops. You probably reduce a couple of the loops out of this code if you really sit back and think about it. So loop through all of the objects in the array we just created. And so this is the rendering one. This is the one where we're gonna do a pass through. Each cube is gonna have a, a pass through the loop and we're gonna hide all of the other ones, bring it to the origin, render it, send it back to its starting position, and then unhide everything else. Um, so first thing we need to do is grab the previous location and there's a critical code here core.location.copy. If you don't, you get a reference to it, and when you make an update, it will overwrite your reference and nothing gets saved. So when we take this old copy, we'll actually need to implicitly call copy so we get a different version of it, not just a reference of it. So render. So this basically says, don't render me. It's false. So we want to make sure our current object is renderable. So otherwise, yet another loop. Uh, We're gonna loop through all of the objects in our array again and hide them. So if cur obj not equal other obj, so we don't wanna hide the one that we're currently rendering, then we go other obj, oh, that should be plural. Other obj dot hide render equals True. Now, if you really want, you don't have to do any of this coding. You can do all of this by hand every single time you do your render. I just wouldn't do that. Uh, cur obj dot location equals the origin. So uh, bpy dot data dot scenes. So basically, we're getting a reference to this guy right here. Of scene like so dot render dot Oops, actually I'm not sure if it cares. I'll stay consistent with my other example. Dot render, dot file path. So we're selling the output directory for the file we're gonna render. In this case, I'm hard coding mine and I'm using Windows file pathing style. So be aware of this if you're on Linux or Mac. And also on Linux or Mac, you are case sensitive, whereas on Windows you are not. So current objects is name. So this is cube.001, 002, etc. Uh, oh, I'm missing some space here. Yeah, so there, that there, and then append our file extension, like so. So basically we just set the file name to save it as, and speaking of which, now we call render. Now we set up all the camera details before, so we should be good to go. Uh, render, call render. It's got one parameter that is very important. Right still, true. I no idea what that does, I just know you need it. And uh, finally, cur obj dot, 
hide render equals false. So we'll unhide our, oh, equals true. Absolutely pointless. I don't know why I even bother doing that because it will be set through this loop anyways. And location equals, let's send it back to where it came from. That's it. In theory, I made no typos. That was a fair bit of code for writing without any typos, but let's see, let's run that script. Hey, no errors. That's cool. Now I will actually show you if you do get an error, uh, yeah, there. Uh, actually, let's just in case this actually does something, let's make sure that the render doesn't actually call because that's the guy that's doing something behind it. So that's obviously an error. I uh, hit it and you'll see line up here, Python script failed, look in console. If you need to look in the console, it's under window toggle system console. And here it is. It'll show you where your error is, a little bit Python method. Do not close this window or it will shut down Blender itself, toggle it back hidden again. So back to normal and we ran it. And now in theory, if I go to this directory, oops, all right, one second. I go to this directory, run that again, and head on over, ta-da! We just created a whole lot of, uh, see the size? Uh, 128 by 128 tiles, and let's go take a look. Ta-da! All right, I obviously did something very wrong. Uh, hmm. So one worked, and then all the rest of my code bombed out. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, give me one second. Oops, all right, I'm a bit of an idiot. I, uh, I missed a very key and critical step and it's important, I will show it to you. Remember back when I showed you the whole um, P for separation bit? Uh, let me just get my script aside here. So that's when we turned pretty much, yeah, let's do something other than that camera. All right, when we turned all of these guys into their own little separate entities. Well, that was very cool and that was very quick and everything else, but I wanna show you something kind of wrong about all this. Is let's grab one of these entities. For example, this guy right here. Sure. Now notice something as I'm grabbing new ones. See the, uh, see the widget here for modifying location? You see how much it's uh, <laughs> not changing? That's a bit of a mistake. Uh, so basically, when we created the array, we still ended up keeping our pivot point of the original source. So that way when I'm doing these these translations, all of these things actually think they're at the origin, which is very obviously not true. Um, so there was one more step we had to do that I totally forgot. So after you went in and you, um, you applied the array, you made your edits, and then you pressed, selected them all and pressed P to separate them by loose parts. After that step or any point after, such as say right now, uh, we can come in here and go select all in object mode like that guy and go to tools, set origin, origin to center of mass. Like so, and I see the little dots and all of them. So now each one of these things, when I select it, it's actually where it is. So that's why my script was failing in a big way because everything was moving way off camera because the positions were wrong. So sorry I missed that out of order. Um, if you follow along with the text version, it's right. So. Uh, oops, hopefully I'll remember to add an annotation that I make a, I miss a step there. But that's why our script failed the first time in theory. So now that that's set correctly, let's go back to our script window and run this sucker. And now our Blender directory has, hey, you, come on. Yay. A whole bunch of them. Now you'll notice on a couple of these, it's being clipped at the top. So we've got a little bit of a camera issue to deal with. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. That's an exercise for the reader. Uh, so our camera's off slightly, causing some clipping to happen. Uh, but otherwise the entire process is now working flawlessly. We just created 36 tiles in a very short period of time. The truth of the matter is you could have replicated from point A to right now in about four minutes. And really it's just a matter of adding detail, adding texture maps, and you've got a neat, clean, isometric world to work with. And you can obviously um, take the pieces you use and reuse them ad nauseum. So um, this is just creating the building blocks that you will ultimately make your game out of. But you see, you can use Blender to create isometric tiles very, very fast. Um, now that we're done, let's quickly go in and actually use these tiles for something. In this case, I'm going to use 
Uh, texture Packer from Code and Web. It's great for this kind of stuff, but you could also use uh, Image Magic or pretty much any kind of image editor that supports batching. We're just going to group them all together in a sprite sheet that's tiled friendly, just to show that this whole process did something. Uh, so come on in here. Uh, Code and Web has a free version available that does everything you need uh, for Texture Packer. Great program. Give it a shot. Uh, brings in all of our tiles like so. What we want to do to make it work with tiled, however, is keep everything nice and consistently sized. So that means we're going to come in here. First, let's turn this to power of two. Some game engines like power of two. Uh, we're going to set algorithm to basic. We are going to set trim mode to none so that every single one of these is the exact same size and that none of the spacing is taken away. Uh, sort by, it's fine. Scale variance is fine. I think everything is good to go. Publish our sprite sheet out. Just to a gigantic ping and we are set. So now we come in here, let's do a brand new map again. So like so. Create a new tile sheet. So instead of a collection image, we'll do a tile map. Browse, pick it. One twenty-eight by one twenty-eight. There's our first tile. Now, like I said, our camera is clipping slightly, so that's why we're our tile is slightly off there. But we have, and you're seeing it slightly off there as well. So you're gonna want to grab that and fix that camera clipping, but. For the most part, we just created a very successful uh, tile sheet of 36 separate tiles in Blender in minutes. So if you are a programmer and you need to create art for your game, the basics are there. If you're an artist and you're daunted by 3D, don't be. So now you can use this as your base and then you start bringing in your texture magic and actually make it look good. Uh, but as a tool for making isometric tiles, it's actually kind of hard to beat Blender. It can output perfect results very fast. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was useful. Once again, there is a text-based version on Game From Scratch. A bit of a plug here. If you do enjoy the content that I keep making at Game From Scratch here on the channel or on GameFromScratch.com, please consider supporting us on Patreon. I'll actually put a link for that as well in the comments. Uh, so hope you enjoyed that. See you all later. Bye.